Y'all are on the wrong side of the chicken tractor. Hey man, did you know your pants are on backwards? No. They are. How do you know my pants are on backwards? Because you've got back pockets in the front. Doesn't seem to bother him. Recently my parents had a pretty good sized water oak tree taken down and unfortunately I was not available that day to film it which is a shame because I'm sure it would have been pretty cool to watch and also I did not want to take it down myself because it was way too close to his shop and to a little storage shed of his and you just got to know your own limitations sometimes. So they got it done by a pro and here's not all of what's left but here's some of what's left. Now water oak makes an okay firewood. It's not as good as say red oak or white oak. White oak is about the best that we can find in our area but water oak does burn hot it's an oak so it does burn pretty hot uh, the downside is it leaves a lot of ashes and I don't think it burns quite as long as white oak does but it does burn hot and it will keep our house warm this winter and also it was pretty convenient just going picking up this trailer full of firewood that needed to be split up so uh, I couldn't really complain about that. So let's get this junk off of the trailer and see if we can start splitting here. I also have some assorted oak right here, some white oak cutoffs from the sawmill and some other assorted oak right in here that will get split and stacked up. I think it's been 10 months to a year or so since this thing has been used last, but if I remember correctly, it had ethanol free fuel with Stabil in it and uh, that fuel actually smells pretty good. So let's check the oil and see if it'll crank. I also always run the fuel out of the carburetor when I'm done with it and that is what I did last time. So that, that should help. Ooh. There it goes.
Hey man, you know your pants are still on backwards? Do you want to like flip them around or? I feel comfortable in them. Okay. Just can't ever be too careful when you're doing stuff outside. Oh, now I've lost her. Oh, there she is. I don't know if you saw that or not, but it was a black widow spider and uh, they just they just love to hide in the worst kind of places and they will flat hurt you if you let them. Well, that's about two and a half hours of actual splitting beside all the moving of the logs and so on and so forth off of the trailer. But that gave me about uh, a sixth of what I need for the entire year. This firewood shed holds about or just a little bit over two cords of wood. Each row of wood is 11 and a half feet long. What are you doing, man? Uh, when I walk through, I'm like this, so you won't see me in the camera. Oh, did you know your pants are on backwards? I know that. Okay, all right. Anyway, the length is about 11 and a half feet. The height is five feet, and these average out to about 19 inches each on the length of these sticks of firewood. And I can put three rows in here, or three stacks in here rather. So that gives me just a little bit over two cords of wood, which is sufficient for what we need here. We live in a relatively mild climate in Georgia, so um, that will probably do it. So as it is, I got about a sixth of what I need for next year, uh, which is pretty good for two and a half hours, I think, and we'll work on this some more another day. A little warm. Is this red enough? Because it was in our garden. Yeah, it was red enough. You can have that. Can I eat it? Yeah. Uh, no, because it's too big. Nope, it will explode. Okay. Can't do it. Our corn is really, I guess what you would call exceptional this year. It's starting to put on ears right now and the bed itself, I've got some pretty defensive bluebirds out here too. The bed itself is only 12 inches high and I can, good grief, I can't even reach the top to measure these things. So from the bed to the top of the tassels, seven feet and eight inches. So seven and a half plus feet on this Silver Queen corn. It is nuts. I don't know why I didn't do raised beds years ago. And we're putting on some really nice ears here as well. A couple of ears on this one. A couple of ears on that one. There should be, should be multiples on each. Here's a silver king corn here. It hasn't been planted nearly as long as the king and it's about 16 inches or so high. It got a good dose of chicken litter yesterday, so I'm hoping it'll green up and really take off. We've got bluebirds that made a nest in this water over here that you can see and uh, they don't like us getting anywhere around it.
you remember at the very end of the last video we did some insulation work on the inside of the living room that we're in the middle of remodeling and at this point we are just about ready to put up ceiling boards and I'm very anxious to put those ceiling boards up because once I get the ceiling boards up that means I'll be able to put some proper lighting in there and we'll we won't have to rely on work lights anymore for our everyday lighting needs so these are our ceiling boards right here and these are the boards that were actually stacked in the middle of the yard that we moved back here and replaced that area in the yard with our raised bed gardens this year which was a wonderful decision it was I didn't like the way it looked in the middle of the yard and the gardens are a whole lot more useful I need about 450 we'll say 450 just to be safe 450 square feet of ceiling board so let's get these out of here we'll get them on the mill and edged and we'll plane them and we'll sticker them in the house so that they can acclimate for a little while so Let's dig some of these out. Let me see. That's a granddaddy long legs. Uh, sorry, Spider. I didn't tell you where the granddaddy long legs. What you doing, buddy? I'm eating blackberries. Eating blackberries? Lots of blackberries. What's on your face? I don't know. Blackberries? Yeah. So I ended up getting 52 boards of various lengths and widths and thicknesses. And what I'll do starting tomorrow, I pulled this up under the shed here because it's too late to start any of this today. But what I'll do is I'll put these on the sawmill in groups of 10 or 12, something like that, and edge them down to about nine inches or so. And what that'll do is that'll give me straight edges that will be able to fit up against each other good when it goes up on the ceiling. And I'll put them on the planer and get them down to five eighths to three quarters, something like that. So these boards i cut these boards in 2021 i believe it was early 2021 somewhere along in there and they stayed in the yard out here stickered up until about two or three months ago whenever we started building these raised beds and that's when they went out there and i'm saying all of this to say that they have been really really well cured uh, but it has only been air drying there's only so much you can do with air drying boards it's kind of subject to whatever the humidity level of the air is and once you put it in the house your air conditioning system is going to have a different humidity level and it might cause issues with the, with the boards so let's put the meter on it and see what the actual humidity is in these board moisture content is in these boards it feels extremely dry it feels very light which is a good thing so i'm hoping it's i'm 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 hoping for seven percent but i'm i'm guessing 10 to 12. let's see what we get here yeah 11 and a half that's kind of what i suspected so I decided to walk in the house and compare those numbers to some boards that have been stacked and stickered in the living room there for a few months at this point since January. And I discovered that the moisture was the same. It's 11.23 somewhere along in there on those boards, 11 and a half on these. So it looks like I'm not going to have to 
stack these in the house, I can skip that step all together, which is fantastic because that would have been a lot. We're about to start cutting those boards in just a second, but first I noticed one of the pigs has got a little cut on our ear, so we need to get some antiseptic on that just to be safe. It wasn't you, and it wasn't you. Was it you? Was it you? Nope, not you. Must have been you. Yep, there it is. That'll help stave off any infection. It's just basically a mix of alcohol and dye, I think. That'll get the job done. It looks nice on you. So I want to start off here just by testing everything to make sure everything is set up right. I'll edge these two boards on just one edge right here and that'll tell me if the bed of the mill is exactly level. It's got to be right. If it's dipping just a little bit, there'll be a big gap in the middle of these two boards where they meet. And if it's bowed up just a little bit, there'll be gaps on the two ends. And obviously that's not something that I want. So what we're going to do is go ahead and cut this make sure it's right and it'll also tell if it's uh, tell us if our, our blade is in good shape too i'm not going to change the blade unless it's necessary that blade seems pretty sharp but it is used if it gives us a good clean cut we'll keep on using it so let's see what we can see what we get out of this If we look at this joint here, we can see that it's actually in really good shape. I can definitely work with that. Kind of hard to get a close up with a GoPro here, but you can see on the cut edge right there, uh, it's, it's fine, it's fine. A lot of these little chips and burrs will be taken off by the planer, and I think that that is smooth enough for us to get a pretty good joint on the ceiling. So at this point, I think we're clear to start cutting. Now this next step here is probably the most important step. This step is gonna make sure that we do all 52 or so of these boards at exactly the same width. And that's important because I'm gonna to have to do these boards in four different batches on the mill. And I need to make sure that this is repeatable because if I get in the house and all of the boards are different widths or there's one batch that's an eighth of an inch wider than another batch, I'm gonna have a lot of trouble mating that batch up to the batch that's already on the ceiling. And it's just just better if every single board is exactly the same width. So what I've done here is I've gotten my depth gauge right where I wanted it, nine and a quarter inches, and I can see my notch right here where the arrow ended up. I'm just gonna take this lumber crayon. Now this is not gonna be the most permanent thing, obviously, but I only need it to survive until the end of this project, until we get done with these boards. So this right here will make sure that I get every single board exactly the same width and I get to save a big headache later on.
well here is what we're left with that, that was a lot of work and i'm about ready to get in the house but this is what we're left with this is just a sample of three boards here and you can see here kind of the variation in i suppose the different trees that were cut down different colors they're all pine but they've each got their own special kind of character to them i guess you could say this board right here is very clear lots of nice uh, not exactly straight grain, but it's clear, no knots. This one in the middle here has got some knots. It's got some of that heartwood in the middle. You can kind of see the original sapling there. And this one over here was a part of a much wider board before I trimmed it down and edged it and you can see the heart right there it's not necessarily heart pine it's just much darker area in the middle of the tree there so uh yeah that's kind of the kind of what we came out with and i think this is probably a good uh probably a very good sample very good representation of what the ceiling will look like right here in the gaps the uh, joints right there are acceptable i wouldn't call them perfect but i would call them acceptable we're gonna go with them i mentioned earlier in the video that these boards have the same moisture content as some boards that had been sitting in the house for a while acclimating to the moisture level inside of the house and I did some more testing on some of these and it turns out there's actually kind of a variation and I'm not totally sure why that is I suppose some boards must have been stacked longer than others but anyway there's a variation between 12 and a half and about 15.3 something like that those boards on the inside of the house I think I said they were 11.5 or something and I think the one that we tested earlier was 11.5 if I remember right that was yesterday so I'm not sure so that's uh that's unfortunate because that means I'm going to have to stack these boards inside of the house to let these acclimate I was really pumped about starting to put these up tomorrow but I am just not going to get in the situation where I put these boards up and I end up with gaps and then I have to take them all down and move them back together I'm not doing that so it's going to be a lot easier in the long run for me just to stack these in the house let them sit for I don't know a few days a week maybe I don't know I'll measure and check moisture before they sit there and see how long they need to sit but anyway so that's probably going to be one of my projects for tomorrow but that's going to do it for this one um I'm ready to go in the house my wife right now is working on corn on the cob uh, tomato sandwiches bacon from our pigs from last year so it's going to be a it's going to be a homegrown supper tonight I hope y'all had I hope y'all enjoyed this video and I will see y'all on the next one